Hello! So I have no shortage of Xbox controllers, yet I keep coming back to the Elite Series 2. So these are 5 reasons why I truly love the Elite Series 2 controller. Plus stick around to the end for that bonus reason. So let's get into it. Alright, so the first reason would have to be the price. Quite shocking, I know. But hear me out. So in regards to price, it does range from about 80 bucks if you buy it refurbished to about 180 bucks if you want to buy it brand new. But I am happy to report that as of the recording, you can pick up the Elite Series 2 controller for about 140 bucks, brand spanking new. Now as far as the limited edition Master Chief controller, yeah, you're gonna pay a lot more. But with your purchase of the controller, you get hard shell charging case with the Xbox branding up top, quite a long, nicely braided USB-A to USB Type-C cable, removable charging dock, customizable thumbsticks and D-pad, which can be swapped out effortlessly via magnets. Bam. And of course, you get the Elite Series 2 controller. My, 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 ain't she a beaut. So when you break it all down, the price, especially at 140 bucks, is quite the steal. Next on our list is going to be the comfort and feel of this controller. Every time you pick up this controller, you know you're in a whole new gaming status. Everything about it just feels right. From the textured grips right here, to keep the controller comfortably inside your hands, to the grippy RT and LT buttons, to ultimately the solid feel in your hands. In my opinion, there is no other controller at this price point currently on the market that checks off all the right boxes. Next up, let's take a look at the backside. Okay, so this is another reason why this controller is considered to be an elite status. Not only do you have some options for trigger stops, for instance, right now, I have it so it goes all the way down, but if I want it to go halfway, there we go, halfway. And if I just want to tap it and get my game on right here, yeah, that's what's up. But also because your hands naturally form around the controller, these trigger buttons right here on the back, they are a complete godsend. Now what's really nice about these triggers on the back is the fact that a lot of times, well, a lot of people, they like to button mash up here, like, you know, straight up, bam, 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 bam. Well, with having these triggers on the back, you can just utilize those triggers and it definitely gives your thumb a break. So as I showcased earlier of just how easy it is to swap out the thumbsticks as well as the D-pad, easy peasy. You can also save three different profiles and customize this controller to your exact likings via the Xbox Accessories app on your Xbox. The tension of the thumbsticks and pretty much every button on the controller is remappable and customizable. No need for a third party app here. This is all done natively. Now you know how I mentioned the heft of the controller, but by no means is this a heavy controller. It's just a solid, well-built device. Well, part of that heft would have to be the built-in battery. Now I know some prefer the original Xbox controller design where you just swap in two AA batteries and you're good to go, but I prefer a built-in battery. And man, oh man, does this battery last? I mean, honestly guys, I can go on weeks without even charging this controller. But when I do, I have some options. I could just use the included cable, plug it into my Xbox and have it charged that way. I could set the controller on the dock while inside the case and have it charged that way. Or I could just have the dock out and about, set the controller on it and charge it that way. There are options to keep this controller juiced up. Well, let's just say the controller is completely dead. All you gotta do is just plug it into the Xbox and it's treated as a wired controller. Xbox really did. Think about everything. All right, and then the bonus reason. Well, as I've stated, I've played countless hours on these controllers and I am proud to say that I have yet to have any drift issues with both controllers. And I think that has to do with the fact that I don't adjust the tension of the thumbsticks. I just let it be. So handsome nation, have you ever had any issues with your controller or maybe know somebody that has? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you want to see another video that the YouTube gods guarantee that you're going to love, then go ahead and click or tap on the screen. And if you want to become a member, then go ahead and click that join button down below. But until next time, handsome nation, thank you and have a good one.